When a strong man armed keepeth his court, those things are in peace which he possesseth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's gospel, we also heard these sobering words referring to the thinking of a devil. I will return into my house whence I came out. This passage clearly indicates that the Protestant idea of once saved, always saved, is erroneous. The devil will often leave such ones for a while, but then he comes back to his house. With some help, no less, he says in the Bible, our Lord says, seven worse than himself. He comes back at once again to make his own, these houses, and they're basically defenseless. We have defenses. It is good to be Catholic. We have the armor of God in the sacraments, in tradition and prayer and the sacramentals. We have a court of virtue in our souls built upon faith, hope, and charity. But be warned, we need strength. That is, we need courage to keep our court and defend our house from the devil who has cast out at baptism. He was cast out of baptism and he wants to get back. We got to fight. Now I'm reminded of the 40 martyrs of Sebast recounted by St. Basil the Great. Their feast day was the beginning of the novena to St. Joseph. That was March 10th. According to St. Basil, 40 soldiers had openly confessed themselves Christians and were condemned by the prefect Licinius to be exposed naked upon a frozen pond near Sebast in Armenia. In the bitterly cold night, they would complete their martyrdom by being beaten first and then freezing to death. Among the confessors, however, one yielded. And leaving his companions, he sought the warm baths near the lake that were provided by the persecutors. He died on his way. He died in both body and soul. One of the guards, keeping watch over the martyrs, beheld at this moment a supernatural light overshadowing them and at once proclaimed himself a Christian. He threw off his garments and joined the remaining 39. Thus, the mystic number of 40 remained complete. This manly act took some courage to make. And now this man is a saint. When Judas committed suicide, his place needed to be filled to keep the apostolic college complete, to maintain the mystic number of 12, 12 months of the year, 12 full moons, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles, 12 gates to the heavenly city as described in the apocalypse. And so St. Matthias was chosen by lot to replace him, accepting this place before the powerful graces of Pentecost descended upon the apostles, surely took some courage to embrace. They were living in fear in the upper room. Without a doubt, Matthias knew something of what was in store for the followers of their crucified Lord. You shall be hated by all men for my namesake, our Lord said. The disciple is not above the master, nor the servant above his Lord. Now, a theme runs through salvation history that shows God filling up empty places with courageous souls, souls willing to risk something for him. Tradition tells us the devils fell from their place in the heavens after being tested. The thrones prepared for them in heaven needed to be filled. Thus, the good shepherd came to find courageous souls among the sons of Adam to fill them to completion. The devil works hard to prevent these places from being filled. He despises us. Those who fill those places, he despises it. That was his place. Thus, there's a battle going on and we need to be strong in our defenses to keep our court of virtue in place so that we can occupy one of these empty thrones. To do this, we need the virtue of courage. Now, courage or fortitude, is the moral virtue that ensures firmness in difficulties and constancy in the pursuit of the good. Firmness in difficulties and constancy in the pursuit of the good. It strengthens the resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles in the moral life. 
The virtue of fortitude enables one to conquer fear, even fear of death, and to face trials and persecutions. It disposes one even to renounce and sacrifice his life in defense of a just cause. St. Thomas says, fortitude of soul binds the will firmly to the good of reason in the face of the greatest evils. It binds the will firmly to the good of reason in face of the greatest evils. It makes us do what is right, come what may. St. Thomas then explains that the greatest of these evils is, of course, death or the fear of death. Thus, it is courage that enables us to pursue some good according to right reason, even in the face of the greatest dangers and threats and fears. And this is why meditating on death regularly can greatly aid us in overcoming fear and grow in courage. St. Thomas gives several examples such as these, not being afraid of serving a sick man because of the possibility of infection. That's straight from Thomas. An example would be St. Catherine of Siena. She comes over the hill. The city she's going to is under the plague. Instead of running away, she went straight into the middle of it. Everybody else is running away, and she's going in to take care of people. Not saying we all have to do that, but this is what makes for saints at times. St. Bernadette and the children of Fatima all endured great trials and even threats of death, but remained faithful to what they knew was clearly true. It was courage that enabled them to do this as many around them failed. St. Thomas says, the act of fortitude thus is not chiefly to, to attack difficult things, but to endure them. There it is. It's to endure difficult things. That is, he says, to stand immovable in the midst of dangers rather than to attack them. To stand without the confusion resulting from irrational fear. So courage keeps fear under control. It's not acting rashly or foolishly in face of dangers, but reasonably with a view to that heavenly choir stall. In Lent, we are on our way to Calvary with our Lord. We're supposed to be heading for the passion. Something must be endured, that is. It's a passion. We're being, we endure suffering. And this requires, as St. Thomas points out, great courage. He is the lamb going to the slaughter with his eyes open. And we are to be in his company. St. John of the Cross explains that we need two kinds of purgation to make it to the higher levels of holiness and ultimately to heaven. He calls them active and passive purgation. So active purgation is what we're trying to do right now in Lent. Take up voluntarily penances to overcome ourselves. But truth be told, and I speak correctly, we are too weak. We are too slow and we're too small of soul to perform such penances as need to be done. And so what does God do? He's a loving God. He's a good God. He provides the needed cleansing by subjecting us to passive purgation. God sees farther and better than we. When we ask for rest or for consolation, he prefers to make us heroes and when it is over, we look back and we thank him that not our will, but his has been done. Now, God normally does this passive purgation by allowing us to undergo various trials through our neighbors or even allow the devil and his minions to do things to us, as is seen in the lives of many saints. Job, St. Jean Vianney, Padre Pio. Through trials of plagues, disease, weather, colds, wars, whatever it be, earthquakes, tornadoes. As we heard in the gospel today, the devil that was cast out tries to return with seven more. The soul that loves God will be purified by these attempts of the devil. But the soul that does not love God will be repossessed. 
And that means we need courage to be that victorious soul. St. Teresa of Jesus repeats herself in so many places in her writings that in order for us to make headway in the spiritual life, to claim that choir stall that's ours, courage is needed. And she repeats herself over and over. Courage, 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 she says. To overcome our deeply rooted instincts of self-preservation. So few reach higher levels of spiritual life in this world is proof that few are truly courageous as they need be. So pray at Mass today, especially for an increase in this virtue, especially when you receive Holy Communion. Yet the Holy Madre consoles us too. She says, be certain that the Lord will never fail his lovers when they take a risk for him alone. Let us be courageous in enduring the trials we face, especially those of the passive purgation that we are now under. All of us have many trials and tribulations that we have to endure daily. But let's be sure we're doing them for the love of God and for the purgation of our souls, as St. Teresa says. The Lent we get is better than the Lent we want. This is passive purgation. In time, then, if we persevere, our souls will become strong and manly, able to protect the inner court of virtue, giving us much peace and spiritual beauty, even in the midst of great trials. And when the time is right, one of those empty thrones left by the cowardly devils and passed over by our weak-willed predecessors will be rightly ours to occupy with this accompanying crown. Now for the rest of the story about the 40 martyrs of Sebast. All died under this torture, freezing and beating, except one boy, Melathon, who was the youngest of the 40. His mother, who was present, seeing him, that he was still living, and after his legs were broken even, she encouraged him, My son, be patient yet a while. Look, Christ is at the door helping thee. But as soon as she saw the other bodies being placed on carts, that they might be thrown on pile, and her son left behind for the impious men hoped that if the boy survived, he might be induced to worship idols. She lifted him up into her arms and summoning all her strength, courageously ran after the wagons on which the martyrs' bodies were carried. Malithan died in his mother's arms and the holy woman threw his body on the pile where the other martyrs were. That as he had been so united with them in faith and courage, he might be one with them in burial and go to heaven in their company. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.